Hello, good people of God. I trust you are all doing well. I want to use this opportunity to welcome you all to the message where daily we load Christian content for seasoned men of God. Hi, dear. We want to build a community and a family with you. So if you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then like this message for us because we want to build a family together. Do want to always comment in the comment section and share this message abroad. I want you to share on your WhatsApp status. I want you to share on YouTube for us, even on Instagram and all social media platforms. I'll see you again. Be blessed as you listen to this message. When you are born again, you see the plan and you begin to walk in that plan. You don't know who you are by knowing your temperament. Sanguine, melancholy, introvert, all of that. All of that is not for the man in Christ. The man in Christ is not a sanguine. He's a new creation. He's a man that cannot be known after the flesh. He's a man of the spirit. You must find yourself in God's image and likeness. So whatever you're called to do will be in his image and likeness. And we said it has to be supernatural. Now, this doesn't take away your natural talents. The call of God, hey, 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 look at me citizens. This doesn't take away your natural talents. I'm in no way does the call of God replace your natural talents. It doesn't replace it. It doesn't take it away. And the call of God does not make your natural talents to cease to exist. I need you to pay attention because a lot of people are confused in this area. Which means you can have what you want to do in the natural. Even Jesus had something he wanted to do in the natural outside ministry. Carpentry. And he was trained a carpenter. And he manufactured furniture for people. Jesus was a practiced carpenter. He didn't have carpentry as an ambition. It's an ambition he carried out. That's why everybody knew him as the carpenter. Because his father was a carpenter and he was an apprentice under his father. Because Jesus didn't go to school. He didn't go to school. His school was a carpentry workshop. He went to skill acquisition school. What we call vocational institute. Under his father to be an apprentice. I'm teaching here. He was a carpenter. Even though he came to die, he still had a career. That's when people say, me, God has called me to be a pastor. I will not do any other thing. Who are you copying? Who deceive you? Who do you? Jesus, who is God, came to earth to save man. Yet he was a carpenter. He had a profession. You say, no, no, I will not go to school. I will not learn anything. My own is the preaching of the gospel. You think me, I don't have another thing I'm doing. Only Bible. You are deceived though. If you see me negotiating for business, you will not know that I know Bible. Huh. If you see me negotiating like this, if you see me bidding like this, if you see me engaging to, to, to buy something, especially ministry things, if you see how hard I negotiate, I negotiate very well. You see this, my sharp mouth is not for Bible alone. It's for business also. I went to school. I didn't go to school to read theology. I read the things you read in school. I read the things you read. I didn't go to read Bible only. Bible reading was one of the things I read, but I read other things. I'm teaching good here. You say, the, the call of God is strong on my life. I will leave, leave university and enter ministry. If I slap you, if I slap you, that calling will push you back to university. <laughs> that university is your first place for ministry. As you are reading and studying, there are souls in your school. Start ministry with them and graduate. 
Graduating from school is part of preparation for ministry. And preparation time is not wasted. I'm teaching good. You go to school. Go and finish your school. Graduate well. Get the degree and bring it. You may not use it, but bring it. Let it be there. A day will come when it will be useful. A day will come when somebody will insult you. You will tell him, ah, you think I didn't go to school? Let me show you my degree. I went to school, but I count all these things as dung for the excellency of Christ. But at least it is there to be counted. See, I'm your father. You must hear me very well. It is there to be counted. Go to school. Go to school. School is not wasted. School is preparation. School will give you relationships. It will give you an opportunity to practice. And it will sharpen your mind. And it will expose you intellectually. So that when you graduate and you engage intellectuals in the gospel, you know what you are saying. I'm teaching good here. You know, a minister of the gospel preaches to all classes of people. You preach to governors. You preach to lawyers. You preach to doctors. You preach to janitors. You preach to, you know, um, ambassadors. You preach to presidents. You preach to different categories of people. Policemen. Military men. You, pre you preach to professors. You preach to doctors. So you need to be equipped so that you can engage at that level. You can engage. You need mental development. You need mental development. Mental equipping. So you can reason at that level. That's why Jesus at the age of 12 had to be training himself. He was engaging doctors. He would sit among them, asking them questions and engaging them. It was mental development. Some of you, the only people you talk to are people you are better than. You don't like talking to people that are better than you. You are afraid that they will expose the myopic nature of your mandula oblongata. So you don't want to engage. You need to engage stronger minds. You need to engage superior arguments. Because it's by that engagement that you grow. I'm teaching good. You don't need everybody that will tell you, well done, well done. You are great, you are great, you are great, you are great. Where? Meanwhile, your greatness is just within a small confine. When you are exposed to the bigger world, you are nothing. You need to grow. Because we are talking ministry here. You need to be equipped. Go to school. Finish your school. And if you have another opportunity, do another one. While you're doing it, be doing ministry. You're equipping yourself. My two PhDs, I got them while I was pastoring you. I was pastoring you and I was reading. I was pastoring you and I was reading. I was doing all that I need to do to, to finish my school. To finish my master's. Finish my first PhD. Finish my second PhD. While I was pastoring you. I didn't just sit there idly. I mean, then God has called me. I am anointed. The glory of God is upon me. You touch me by accident. You die by mistake. No, no. I was reading. Am I communicating at all? So if you gather all, if you come to United Nations to preach, uh -uh, that would be the cheapest thing. I will not even do study. I will just speak in tongues and enter there. I'll just speak in tongues and enter there. And lay before them a framework of the defense of the gospel. And engage them at the level they are thinking. And take care of their sinful nature. It's as easy as that. I'm not afraid of any audience. One of why you are afraid when we say pray, you are afraid to pray because you don't trust your utterance. When you trust your utterance, you are not afraid to display your credentials. In fact, when you trust your utterance, you'll be saying, call me, please, call me, call me. Call me, I want to pray, I want to pray, call me. Because you know what you're going to say. But when you don't know what you're going to say, you just be dodging. When they want to call somebody, you do like this. When they finish, you stand up. When they want to call, you do like this. Because you're not sure. Confidence comes by knowledge. See, I hear you. Touch your neighbor, say, grow up, grow up, grow up. Learn, 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 learn. But how many of you have discovered your mind has improved seriously since you came to Power City? How many of you have discovered that even the way you look at things, your worldview has changed? How many of you have? Because that's what the gospel does. The gospel enlightens. The gospel is illumination. It's light. I'm teaching good. You better stay because I must finish this message. Message must finish today. See, I hear you. Are you ready? Because we must finish it. We must finish it. Praise God. Jesus was a carpenter. The disciples were fishermen. Were they not? Paul was a tent maker. What is that? 
career. Is that their calling? That's their career. So they all had their natural talents. They had their skills. But it was not their calling. What do you do in the natural? What do you do in the natural? That's not your supernatural calling. That's not the call of God for you. That's your choice. That's your career. That's your desire. That's your ambition. We hope you've been blessed by this message. And as you've been blessed, we want you to bless others by sharing this message abroad. If you're new here, can you don't leave without hitting on that subscribe button for us. Hit on that notification bell. Like and then comment in the comment section. We'll see you again on the next one. Stay tuned.